Hi, I'm Kent. I've got a bunch of things that are in flight or just starting, and I figured in this video I'd give you a quick update on all those. So the first one is I am still rearranging my studio space, and as you can see, it is still a bit of a mess. These are the things that are kind of without homes right now, and there's a pile over my shoulder as well. However, I was able to basically take everything off the shelves and kind of put it back in a much more sane way. Recently, Adam Savage redid his shop and expanded, and he had the notion of a hardware store, and that actually gave me some ideas of how to arrange things. So I can give you a quick tour. So these are a bunch of bookshelves that I added that are off to my right hand side, and over here, I have kind of turned it into a supplies category. At the top are some things I use very rarely, so this is silicone, I have some excess tools over there. Down towards the bottom, which you probably can't see very well, so let me move you. There you go, down here towards the bottom, I have all of the materials I use to mix glazes. So those are all living together now, which is great. These middle shelves I don't quite have organized right yet, but I have like my kiln post right here. I just stuck my hose for my air right here and down below are some longer things. So up here I have finished pots. I have kind of miscellaneous camera stuff right here. This isn't really organized. Down here towards the bottom, just barely in frame, I have my glazes that are already mixed. And then over here, I have my plaster molds. And down in the bottom in the corner, I have my dry clay so I can mix up some more slip. And then finally back there, I have a bench set up as well. So right now it's just kind of a catch-all. Underneath I have some more plaster supplies and some rolling buckets. So it's getting better, but there's still a handful of things I need to find homes for. I also managed to get a few new toys, so I have some ideas for some videos coming up. One of them has to do with those two things there, that stand and that bucket. So hopefully I'll find some time to go ahead and play with those and I'll definitely show you the results. I also mentioned that I was going to go ahead and take my first pottery class and I've done that. It's been going on for I think three weeks now and we're basically starting with some pinch pots, which is interesting. Very early on with my pottery, I started doing some slab building and then pretty directly switched over to slip casting not too long after I started. So kind of going back and filling in some of these skills has been interesting. I'm not too sure pinch pots are really my thing. Once I get them finished, I will show them here on the channel just so you guys can see. It has let me do some experimenting that I haven't otherwise been able to do. Since it's a fixed class, I basically have this time set aside so I can do some things that are maybe a little bit more tedious than I would do at home. It's also been really wet here, which means things are drying very slowly, which means I need to do some other things while things dry out. And that's actually one of the interesting things about working in the studio space. I'm used to being able to kind of come and go whenever I want to deal with my pots here. And managing moisture level is actually one of the challenging things in the shared studio space that I don't have access to all the time. Basically, we wrap things up when we're done so they don't dry out too fast. However, there's not really any good way to kind of check on them in an intermediate way. It's also the winter and just been really wet, so that probably doesn't help. I'm guessing in the summer I'd have the opposite problem where things would probably try and dry out too fast. The other fun thing is doing pottery with other folks in a shared studio space. I never had that since I taught myself and have done all my pottery here in the garage, so that's also been fun. And it's part of the reason the videos here have been coming out a little bit more slowly. I'm spending a bunch of time there in class, and so that's kind of allocating my pottery time that I'd otherwise be spending in the channel. We'll see if I can find a way to balance those two. Next, I'm going to talk about Shapecast. I haven't been making too much progress. I did some kind of technical infrastructure stuff that should make it go faster, but I need to test it out and testing it is a little bit of a pain right now. The benefit is once I get it working, I should be able to support a whole lot more of the beta testers. And when you submit a pot to be generated, it should actually go a lot faster. It's still gonna take me a little while to get all those changes incorporated. And again, my overall goal is to try and keep at least a version of Shapecast open for everyone for free for as long as possible. And I'm still exploring different ways to maybe support Shapecast. As I've mentioned a few times, my kind of day job is on the research side, and I've actually done a couple of projects in the ceramic space, which has been fun. Last summer, I did a study around some people who did slip casting, which was awesome. Unfortunately, the paper I wrote and submitted just got rejected, so I just went ahead and turned that back around and turned it back in for another revision, so we'll see what happens there. I also wrote a paper on the beginnings of Shapecast, and so we'll see if it gets in as well. So that's been fun. In that vein, I'm also thinking about doing some larger research projects around Shapecast, and that means I will probably be reaching out to those who have signed up and asking for their feedback in various ways or basically getting some data around the usage of Shapecast. So if you're watching this basically now, when I produce this, you might get an email from me in the not too distant future. If this is much later, sorry, the study's already closed. And recently I've been working on my spheres and turning those into lights, and I have some updates there. So a while ago, I made a sphere and put a bunch of holes in it and turned it into a lamp. That one was raw and unglazed and I went ahead and tried glazing these and some different techniques for making the holes. So this one is the first one I made and I'm going to cover up the light and 
It's probably very faint. I have the lights on. I can turn them off. I don't know, you might be able to see. There's actually light shining out through these holes. This one I made smaller holes. I actually took a needle tool and just poked a bunch of holes and I was curious how they might act. I think they're a little bit too small. I don't think they're large enough to have the light shine through. And then obviously the other thing with all of these is I glazed them. So I was curious how the glaze would react over the holes and I actually filled them in. So the small ones, that wasn't a surprise. So these are the bigger ones. So I can pull the light out and move it over. Cover the top up. So hopefully we can get some better exposure and you can see that actually there's a pretty good effect here of the light shining through. I had some glaze defects. I basically just poured the glaze on. So I need to do a better job of that, but these were just some tests. So this one here is in copper. And then this one over here. It has some titanium dioxide. So I was showing these to a couple people and one person mentioned that it looked like rice grain porcelain from China. So I had to go digging. I'd never heard of that before. And so there's this technique in porcelain in China where basically the artist would cut out holes that were more or less the shape of a rice grain. So kind of long and skinny. And then there was a glaze application put over it and that became translucent. I'd heard about translucent porcelain before, but this is actually a glaze effect. So that was really cool. And it just goes to show you that pretty much no ideas are new. Almost everything's been done before, but it also means that I can actually go and be a little bit more intentional about glazing over these. So all of these glazes have some opacifier in them, basically to make them less translucent. And if I want to use them as little windows, I want to make them more translucent. The other thing I want to do is actually play around with the viscosity of the glaze and in particular the surface tension. I knew these were parameters that could be manipulated. And so I went reading on digital fire and of course there was something on there. So I found another glaze recipe and this one here has a larger surface tension. So the idea is that it can bubble up and potentially span this hole better without kind of running down. And I have all the ingredients for this. I want to go ahead and mix up this glaze and I'll probably try it just plain with nothing in it and see what it looks like. It should be clear. That's what the description says. And then I can try adding some various colorants and seeing what happens that way. It'll probably block more of the light, but it can potentially turn in maybe to an interesting stained glass effect. And then there's again, the question of, do I want to glaze the whole thing or just want to try and glaze the holes and leave it raw? So that's on my to-do list as soon as I make some more spheres. And in the comments, someone had suggested getting some punches. So I went ahead and got some of those as well. So these are a few different diameters and the idea is you can punch them into the clay and hopefully that'll work better than the drill bit. At least I can try it out. So that's a quick tour in the world of pottery by Kent. There's, let's say, several things going on and in flight in various stages. And it's just kind of a matter of chipping away at them one by one. And of course, there's always new shiny things that catch my attention. I want to go do those. I hope you found that interesting. And if you have any questions or comments, do let me know. Thanks.